All right, in the last previous two lessons, we went over an introduction, two introductions to Amos chapter 4, verses 6 through 13, regarding the disciplines, those punishments and belt whippings that were due upon the northern kingdom of Israel. So we'll get right to it here, since those introductions are there for you to listen to. Today we're going to do Amos chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. But I gave you also cleanliness of teeth in all your cities, and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you, while there were still three months until harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on the other city I would not send rain. One part would be rained on, while the part not rained on would dry up. So two or three cities would stagger to another city to drink water, but would not be satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. So that feeling that many of us experienced when we were younger, that punishment, and a belt whipping was to be in store when your father returned home from work. The feeling of an, an anticipation of manual discipline from the strong arm of the father. Well, that strong arm of authority for the northern kingdom has returned home from work. And is beginning his battery of punishment, his arsenal of belt whippings for disobedience and making their own way and not God's way. And Amos says in verse 6, On behalf of the Father, I gave you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Now, why would God deprive them of sustenance? Well, it says here in the verse, Yet you have not turned to me. You have not turned to me. So the first of three curses of punishment here is God gave them clean teeth. Cleanliness of teeth. Now God didn't punish them with good oral hygiene. No, no. God gave them clean teeth and a lack of bread. There was no food to chomp down on to even stain or soil their teeth. So there was no need to floss those clean chompers. Because there you have no bread. They have nothing to eat. So I mentioned this in one of those introductions that we did to this particular lesson in Amos chapter 4, verses 6 through 13. But we see the theater of hunger from the less fortunate places in the world. The cleanliness of teeth. The children, you know, with the swollen bellies with flies on their face. We see that kind of stuff, that famine abroad. But I don't doubt that that is real famine, real hunger, real cleanliness of teeth. But people profit off these things. Just ask any anybody in upper management that works with the United Way, just what their yearly salary is. huh? See, all we see is what is on the television and in magazines regarding this famine, this hunger abroad, and we in the land of Uncle Sam today, well, we look pretty good. We look pretty good. We ain't hurting for no meals. And we just haven't experienced famine. There may be a half a dozen late power bills that went unpaid and the power service was cut off. That's famine to most. That's famine. So, there will be an incident within countries or, or individuals within countries all over the world where within the conscience of the words, yet you have not turned to me, will be said. And most people 
or they make their own way and they miss that blessing, that reality of not returning to God and having consequence rain down. Yes, a blessing. You have not turned to me. The big wake-up call. It is a blessing. And of course, there are today people experiencing those things, but they tend to go unnoticed. A, a single mother, for instance, is experiencing the price of food going up with five kids to feed with the scumbag father nowhere to be found. The lonely widowed grandmother, alone, all alone with the grandchildren not having time to visit. Her cost of medication has gone up or is hard to be made available. We truly do not know if it is consequent of decision or God's will, but these these things fall upon everyone. I have my situation. Some of you know about it, and I may rehash this and give an update on it sometime, but I, I'm plagued with loneliness, and my way of life as a homesteader was gone in an instance. But I learned, or was corrected real quick, that my ways are not God's ways if I am to be an ambassador for Christ. All right, to get back on track here, famine and hunger and widespread disease and militarial conflict, if that's a word, fall upon nations and its people individually as all part of the way the battle of good and evil coexist. And at times, individuals receive, if you will, friendly fire whatever it may be, from a nation turning its back on God. Take the events, for instance, going on in the land of Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam has turned away from God, period, as a nation. As a nation, we have taken an uninspired document, the Constitution, uninspired, and held all our stock in it. We don't need to be dependent upon foreign oil. Uncle Sam can take care of himself. But the fallen world way of thinking is greed and covetousness. Buy, sell. Buy and trade. Pickpocketing deals for kickbacks behind the people's backs. I mean, look at the choice of candidates for president Uncle Sam has had. Not a one fits the biblical format. Not a one. It's always it's always the uh, the less of two or three or four evils, you see. We've had a blaspheming Mormon, a supposed Muslim, and a fellow that grabs things and has economical interests all over the world. And old Uncle Sam has an enormous Catholic influence as a nation, right on down to its states and local governments. So the next famine on Amos' prophecy is drought. Amos 4, 7. And furthermore, I withheld the rain from you while there was still three months until harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on another city I would not send rain. One part would be rained on, while the part not rained on would dry up. Well, in that arid arid region of the world in the northern kingdom then, when they would plant, just as anywhere else, it needed an initial rain for the seed to germinate. Then as the plants reach up from out of the soil to the sun, more rain is needed. So they are monitoring these crops as the harvest is nearing. And they're observing God deal with them as prophesied. The sun is scorching their crops from the lack of rain in the last three months till that harvest is to come. So as a people that believe in wooden and golden gods, O 
over the one true God does not understand that the God that is sending the statement is making the declaration of, yet you have not turned to me. So they don't, they don't turn to the one true God. They make their own way, contemplating on how they can manage or what they can purchase to reverse such a thing. They don't turn to God. Instead of focusing on the true God and dealing with their sin, they attempt themselves to alter the consequence of disobedience. So God would send rain on one city and on another city would not send rain. They were lacking the eyes to see. They had cataracts for the sovereignty of God. And all around them, crops just soaking up the rain as their crops dried up. Now if you look even today at fires and tornadoes, we've all seen the images and videos, an entire house demolished. And then 50 yards away, a barn or a shed untouched. That surgical control by God. Weather systems. They were put in place and do what they do in the created order. Even though man can manipulate such patterns, God can do as he pleases for he created the earth. No rain on one land and rain on another. That demonstrates God's sovereignty. So Amos goes on in his prophecy of discipline of God withholding rain and the relevance of rain to the water of the world. I mean the water of the word. The word of God. The rain, the water of the word. Now rain is often used that way. You've heard the expression former and latter rain. Sure, in the Old Testament and its agricultural society. Just as agrarian life, plant life, needs the former and the latter rain, well, so does humanity. Humanity needs it oh so badly. The Word of God. And that former rain, and that latter rain of the Word of God in one's walk. Let's jump way, way, way ahead here to Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Behold, days are coming declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water. See, God's doing that now in Amos 4. This is chapter 8. I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the word of the Lord. And the people will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the east, they will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. But they will not find it. Now, ain't none of us starving here. But we can all relate to the unpleasant feeling of hunger pains or a sore dry throat from being thirsty, right? Can you imagine what would transpire if people craved the scriptures as that? But by observation, there's nothing but false hunger. False hunger for the word and counterfeit conversions. So moving along, Amos chapter 4, verse 8. So two or three cities would stagger to another city to drink water, but would not be satisfied. Yet you have not turned to me, declares the Lord. Now, running out of water, all rationed food is expended. They're staggering around. They're staggering around to another city to drink water, where it was raining when they experienced their drought. And they are, well, we are, as they then, staggering around in famine, with not a drop of not one drop of the water of the word. And we as they are unstable, trying to find what is needed spiritually. 
We're trying to find what is needed spiritually through physical means. So they're going to the next city to see if maybe their well is full. This is a thirsty caravan. Think about it. Amos says two or three cities will stagger to another. So these two or three cities of people go all the way over to another city, overwhelming it into an economic collapse. Think about that. The two or three cities around you coming to visit. It would break you. Economic collapse. So that city, with all the rain, will be getting their discipline. They're whipping, but in a different fashion at a different time. Think about Uncle Sam. One state falls, goes to the next. That state falls. The two go to the next. So Amos in verse 8 says, two or three cities stagger to the next to drink water and would not be satisfied. And still they didn't return to God. It's never enough, this materialism. It's never enough, this physical stuff. Huh? Many try to replace what they need spiritually from God with material items that please the five senses. What, what feels good, what they can touch, what smells good, what they can see, you know, all those tangible things. These are the characteristics of the natural man, the untamed heart of humanity. Let me just close with a little gospel here from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman therefore said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water shall thirst again. You know, that old well water. You'll thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water, springing up to eternal life. I look forward to talking to you all. Till next time.